the first thing was that we started like just looking at how do we get the data from the scripts, right? And how do we kind of evaluate um, things like uh, when somebody speaks to McKay, how does McKay respond? And it ended up being like writing a lot of plumbing code and that kind of stuff for it. And we, we were getting nowhere. We kind of failed fast with that one. Uh, so one of the things that we ended up deciding to do then was to say, well, what if we can create a new language to structure screenplays? And so that, you know, that make them much more easily machine readable. And then once we did that, then suddenly that like unblocked a log jam so that we could start training lots of models. And so like we got all of the screenplays from uh, Atlantis and from SG1, and we kind of put them into these format. I haven't done universe yet. I promise I will add it, but you know, and I put them into this format and then it became very easy for me to like, you know, run a piece of code that says, give me every line of McKay dialogue and give me every line that preceded that. Huh. And and then there's a model transform. Uh, there's a model architecture called a transformer, not to be confused with robots in disguise. Um, yeah. And uh, the idea of a transformer is it allows you to say, well, when a sequence of text looks like this, then you can do a sequence to sequence type thing. And then that was perfect for this. And that's often used for machine learning, uh, for sorry, machine translation, right? Ah. Because in the past, machine translation used to be translate word for word, but then phrases didn't translate very nicely. Right. right. And uh, but then if a sequence of words that means one thing in English and there's a sequence of words in French or Portuguese, you know, where the words may be placed differently in the sequence, but the English sequence predicts the Portuguese sequence. Mm, mm. There's an architecture like that with something that's called attention in it. So you can attention to words in their places. So I had started adapting like some code that was out there that was actually built for building machine translation and said, well, what if we have a sequence of English words that are spoken by another character and a sequence of English words that are spoken by McKay, you know, mm. or vice versa, when McKay says something, how does the other character react? And like start Usually predicting, badly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and start predicting those sequences to sequences and then start like saying, okay, I'm gonna get two characters and models for these two characters and I'm gonna have like character one will say something, how does McKay respond? Mm. And then McKay says that thing, how does the other character respond? And then also then within a script, you ha generally have like a scene heading and then there's like an action description and then there's characters. And like, how does a character respond to an action description like in the script? So for example, there might be an explosion, right. you know, and like, how would McKay respond to an explosion or how would, you know, I know Teal'c respond to an explosion. Mm. McKay might be going like, oh my God. Uh, where Teal te might be just... I was actually going to say they were quite... They'd probably be quite a similar response, I thought, <laughs> both with heroic bravery, I would, I would imagine. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. So, but then we could start like training with things like that to so start saying, okay, well, if I have action descriptions now, if I write an action description, how does like McKay respond to that? How does another character mm. respond to that? And, you know, the little script that you're going to read through today, like you'll notice the last part of it, no spoilers, but the last part of it has an action description and then there's a yeah. character responds to that action description in a way that kind of made the, sh the next, the, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up, you know? Yeah.